Okie dokie. Uh, what we got here is we're going to talk about some binomial settings. Um, if you're following along at home, this is like 6.3 a day one. And so what is a binomial setting? Well, a binomial setting and the conditions, so they call it conditions of a binomial setting, um, are that you need four key things. First off, when you're talking about an event, the event has to be binary. That means it either happened or it did not happen. Um, the other thing has to be independent. Independent is where you have, uh, where the event, when it occurs, uh, that probability of that event is not swayed by any other um, circumstances. Um, the result's going to be the same, regardless of the other event. The final thing is, or one of the final things, is it also needs to be a set number of trials. That is key, and that number is going to be n. In the same way is that we want to talk about the same probability, s. So. Um, the same probability each time, that's what makes it kind of independent, is that the probability does not change um, as you go through each trial of the event. And together we have this acronym called BINS. have a lot of acronyms and stats, um, and BINS is one for binary. So if you remember the B, binary, or not binary, sorry, bi binomial, it will give us that. Now, how do you find a binomial probability? Well, if you want to find P, uh, the probability of X event happening this many times. Um, you do what you take is the total number of n, uh, number of trials, with your combinations, uh, k being the number of successes that you're looking for, and p being the probability of success to k, 1 minus p to the n minus k power. These two values right here have to add up to 1, and this has to add up to the total n. When we talk about binomial probability, sometimes it is written instead of this combination like this, um, n and k, you can also write it like this. It's not a division symbol, it's just n over k. The number of arrangements of k successes. Um, p is probably a success, and so on and so forth. If you're wondering where this coefficient, um, binomial coefficient, comes from, it comes from this, the combinations, um, where you have n over k, where it's n factorial, where you multiply successive of trials over a period of time, k, number of successes, um, and then n minus k, that factorial. And together, my friends, it comes out to be your binomial coefficient. All right, number of ways of arranging k successes among n observations. And that's what we have there. All right, well, let's try a problem out here with this binomial setting. And let's check out what we have here. I'll make my thing a little bit nicer. And there we go. So for each of the following situations, depending on whether or not the given random variable has a binomial distribution, just find your answer. Okay, you play whack-a-mole. If you remember that little game, you have to go to Chuck E. Cheese or whatnot. Fun, 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 and the sun, 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 sun. But from playing this game in the past, you have you know that you have an 80% probability of whacking the mole before it drops back into the hole. The holes pop up randomly, and your ability to whack any particular mole is not affected by whether or not you whacked the previous mole. Okay. Um, so what this is saying is that it is independent. All right. Okay. There are 20 moles to be whacked. All right, 20 moles to be whacked during one round of the game. Let x be the number of moles you are able to whack. So first off, is it binary? All right, so we're looking for binomial. Okay, um, uh, binomial setting. And is this binary? The answer is yes. Either you're whackable or not. All right, or not. So that is definitely binary independent. Yes, it is independent. Um, it is independent because we just said um, the previous mole is not affected by whether or not you whacked the previous mole. So that is independent right here. Oop. All right, so yes. Um, next thing is um, we have a set number. All right, um, and that answer is yes. Okay, our number is 20. So we'll be whacking moles 20 times. All right, and then finally, S is the same probability. Um, it is independent, and the same probability is going to equal 0.8. That is it. the probability of success of whacking a mole. All right, so the answer is yes. This is binomial. Um, that's binomial distribution. So yes, binomial distribution. And that's, oh no, boom. All right, let's try another one. Say in the next day you play ski ball. All right, ski ball, if you remember that little game, you roll them up the thing, and you try it, and you know there is a 10% probability 
of getting any given ball in the 100 or 10,000 point hole. Uh, well, I mean, number of balls you must roll until you get to one in the hundred. So, a ball you need to roll until you get there. So, let's think about this. Is this binary? Okay. Um, the answer is yes. Either you get 10,000 points. All right. Or not. Um, is it independent? Yes. I believe it would be independent because I don't think um, whether you roll the ball now or the previous one will be affected by the previous roll. So I'm going to say yes. Um, is there a set number? Number. Well, not really because you're trying to keep on rolling until you get there. So the answer is no. Uh, uh, not a set number. Uh, a set number of trials. All right. All right, so therefore, not a binomial distribution. And that's what we got there. Boom, nailed it. All right, so that's sad. Mm, yeah, not here. Well, let's keep on moving on. Now, now you play a game called um, Tainui Duck Pond. Ooh, that sounds... Um, uh, uh, Sanami Duck Pond, there are 100 ducks. You get pummeled by tidal waves, all right, by tsunamis. You have to reach uh, your hand to tsunami, and select a duck. If there is a star at the bottom of the duck, you win. The game play claims to have 20 ducks with stars among 100 ducks, all right? After each round, you must place the duck back in the uh, plunchous water. So W is the number of times you win if you play this game 10 times. Okay, so that's the number of times you play it. You play it 10 times. So first I explain it. This is a binomial random variable. Um, w uh, is a, a binomial random variable. Why? Um, well, first off, we know that it is binary. Okay, the event is binary. Okay, so either you find a star duck. Um, star duck. Or not. Okay, um, you also have it independent. It's independent because um, you place the ducks back. Um, place ducks back in water each time. So you pick one and place back. So that's what we have there. Um, there is a n, so it's 10, so there's a set number. Trials. And then finally, um, S, do we have the same probability? Um, the answer is yes, same probability and that probability, it's not prob probability, um, is P equaling, and what do we have here? Uh, 20 ducks, F is 100, um, which is 20 out of, of 10, which is one out of five, or sorry, 100, all right. And then so you have one out of five. So you have one, one fifth chance of winning. So now the question is, find the probability that you win in the game three times. Okay, so what we have here is we're trying to find the probability that W, that we win exactly three times. Well, we're going to take um, this, and we're going to take 10, and we're playing it three times. We have a probability of success of one out of five, and we're going to win it three times. But we have a probability of failure of four out of five times. And so that's going to be the remaining part, which is be seven. We can put this into our calculator. All right, so if you take out your calculator right here, I got mine sitting right here <laughs> on the screen. What a queen getting. All right, and if you go over here and press second, you're not second, um, if you go math, I apologize, and you go to probability, all right, you have this thing called um, a there. Now, when you have this, you're going to put 10 here. We're going to put 3 here. And we're going to multiply this value. And if we have that right there, we can multiply that value. We have 120. We're going to multiply that answer by 1 fifth. We're going to put that in here. 1 divided by 5. And we're going to raise that to the third power. We're then going to multiply this by the probability of failure, all right, which is going to be. Four out of five times. 
And we're going to raise that, my friends, all right, to the seventh power. Because these two have to add up to be equal to 10 right there. This is 3 way of that. All right. Well, I think we have our answer. So we're going to take that. And we have uh, 20.2013. 0 0 0 All right. So we have that as our solution, our value. And so there you go. And so um, that is what we have here on how to identify a binomial, all right, binomial setting and how to use binomial probability. Well, I hope this helped you out and good luck and God bless you guys, problems.